On this episode of Big Guy Builds, we install wood paneling. Let's get started. One of the keys to having an efficient, enjoyable workspace is having your most frequently used tools handy, but out of the way. For most woodworkers, this means a wall organization system of some sort. We prefer plain old three quarter inch plywood. It's inexpensive, requires minimal labor to install, and is infinitely flexible. Start by locating and marking the wall studs. Securely attaching the plywood to the wall studs is key in maximizing the flexibility of this approach. The easiest way is by using an electronic stud finder. You want to mark the stud locations near the top of the wall and the bottom. I didn't get my marks low enough on the wall, so I need to extend them using a level. Line up the edge of the level with one of your marks. Make sure the level is plumb, then make new marks. Rinse and repeat. Next, temporarily install a ledger board to the wall. This will help support the sheets of plywood as we attach them to the wall and help keep them aligned and level. I measure down from the ceiling to mark where the bottom of the plywood should be. I'll be leaving a gap at the top of the plywood. This will make installation a little easier, and we may run some electrical conduit across the top of this wall in the future. The gap at the top will provide a nice way to tuck the conduit out of the way. Align the top of the ledger board with the mark and drive a screw into a stud. Level the ledger board and drive another screw into a stud. Now I can lift the first sheet of plywood into place. The spacing layout of the studs in this wall were such that it was easiest to mount two full sheets in the center part of the wall, then add two strips on either side. Once the plywood is resting on your ledger board, make sure both vertical edges are aligned with studs. Both edges should run down the center of a stud, as these studs will need to be shared by adjacent sheets of plywood. Once the plywood is aligned to the studs, drive a few screws, making sure they hit studs, to hold the sheet in place. Now move your ledger board over for the next sheet. Butt the top of the ledger board to the bottom of the first sheet, check for level, then drive the two screws into studs. This next sheet will need to accommodate an obstacle, an electrical outlet. We'll be adding a box extender so we can move the outlet to the surface of the plywood. But first, we'll need to cut a hole for the box extender to slide into. Using the ledger board, lift the plywood into place and slide it up against the edge of the outlet. Mark the edge of the plywood at the top and bottom of the existing outlet box. Now, extend those marks onto the face of the plywood. Next, measure from the edge of the first sheet of plywood to the outlet box. Measure at the top of the outlet as well as the bottom in case the outlet wasn't installed square. Transfer these measurements to the face of the plywood. Also, transfer the width of the outlet box. You may need to extend your horizontal lines to intersect with these vertical marks. Use a straight edge aligned to your horizontal lines and mark where things intersect. You now have the corners of the hole defined. Connect the dots with a straight edge and the outline of the hole is defined. We're going to use a drill and jigsaw to cut out the hole. With a bit that's slightly larger than the jigsaw's blade, drill starter holes. Usually, two holes near two diagonally opposite corners is sufficient, but I got a little extra jiggy with the drill on this one. Now use the jigsaw to cut along your lines. Time for a test fit. If everything went well, the outlet box will fit perfectly inside your hole. If everything fits, drive a few screws to hold the sheet of plywood in place. Time to tackle those two end pieces. Measure from the edge of the plywood you just installed to the corner. Measure in several places as the corner may not be perfectly plumb and square. Transfer these measurements onto a new sheet of plywood. Using a track saw or a circular saw and straight edge, rip the plywood to size. This will most likely be a tapered cut. Also, we cut this a little bit wider than needed in case the corner is not perfectly straight. Sometimes corners can bend or even be a little wavy. While holding this piece of plywood up against the installed plywood, we run a pencil line down the back of the piece against the corner. This will scribe the exact profile of the corner onto the back of the plywood. This will allow us to refine this edge of the plywood to exactly match the corner. Rinse and repeat for the other side of the wall, and our plywood is hung. Yeah, baby, yeah. The last step is to drive more screws. A lot more screws. Screws should be driven approximately every 6 to 8 inches along the edge of each sheet of plywood 
and roughly every 12 inches or so on the interior of the sheets. These screws all need to hit studs. If you've kept everything level and aligned, it'll be easy to hit the studs along the edges of the plywood. Hitting studs in the interior of the plywood can be a little trickier. However, it'll be much easier if we have lines running down the plywood indicating the locations of studs. We'll start by checking our stud location markings at the top and bottom of the wall. Then we'll use a chalk line to connect these marks. This is simply a spool of string wound up in a case filled with brightly colored powder that impregnates the string. We first hook the end of the string at the top of the sheet of plywood at the stud mark. Then pull the string down and align it with the stud mark at the bottom of the plywood. Pull the string taut, then snap it. The chalk will leave a nice crisp line on the plywood indicating where the stud is. Do this for all remaining studs, then start screwing. Yeah, baby, yeah. And just like that, you have an infinitely variable wall organization system. We've adorned our walls with a variety of 3D printed holders and caddies. Some tools that came with their own wall mounted cases and some shop made shelves. We even mounted our air compressor. We also have a bunch of items that just require driving a single screw. And it makes a convenient way to display your parking sign collection. Since we took care to attach the plywood to wall studs, we did not have to worry about mounting any of these shelves and doodads to studs. We can screw them into our plywood wherever we need them to be. And there's another workshop improvement project in the books. There's still more to come, so be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And until next time, I'm John Hobbs for Big Guy Builds.